All right, I personally love this rule. It comes up pretty frequently, yet people seem to be so divided on what the ruling is. I feel like half the people say that you don't get relief, while the other half says that you do. But the best part about this rule is that no matter which side you're on, you could be right. Let me explain. So here we have my ball lying in the fringe, which is part of the general area. I'd like to put this ball to this flag, but I've got this sprinkler head that's in my line of play. And the question is, do we get free relief in this situation? This sprinkler head is an immovable obstruction, which is one of the four abnormal course conditions we'll find under rule 16. And rule 16 is very clear about what it means to have interference and to therefore get free relief. So in order for me to get free relief from a sprinkler head, an immovable obstruction, I have to have interference in one of the following three ways. It has to interfere with my lie, which means that my ball is either touching or is in or on the sprinkler head. It has to physically interfere with the area of my intended swing, which includes the backswing, the downswing, and the follow through on the stroke that I intend to use for my next shot. Or it has to physically interfere with the area of my intended stance, which includes not only the position of my feet, but also my body in preparing for and making a stroke. So if I were to simulate making my next stroke here, you can see that the sprinkler head doesn't interfere with any of that stuff. It's not enough for the sprinkler head to be close enough to distract me or even influence how I play my next shot because I don't have interference in any one of those three ways. In this situation, I would get no relief and I'd have to play this ball as it lies. Now, having said all that, there is a local rule that specifically addresses this situation. Out here at Skybrook, though, my home club, we don't adopt this local rule. So in this scenario, I'd have to play it as it lies. But if you play at a course or even in a tournament where this local rule has been adopted, you could get relief in this situation. So let's break down exactly what that looks like. In order to get free relief under this local rule, there are three conditions that must be met. Number one. The sprinkler head must be in your line of play, which simply put is the line that you intend to hit your ball on. We can verify that by getting down behind the ball. It is in fact in our line of play, so we can check that one off the list. Number two, the sprinkler head must be within two club lengths of the putting green. We can verify that pretty easily. A club length is the longest club in our bag that's not a putter. We measure that out. It is close, but it is within two club lengths. We can check that one off the list. And number three, my ball has to be within two club lengths of the sprinkler head. And we're well inside two club lengths right there, so we can check that one off the list. With all three conditions now satisfied, we would be entitled to free relief under this local rule. And we're gonna take that relief just as we normally would for an abnormal course condition, which means we're gonna find the nearest point of complete relief, and from that point, we get a one club length relief area. The only difference here is that we're looking for the nearest point of complete relief for our line of play, since that's what we have interference with, and that's what this local rule is giving us relief from. So I have to find the spot that's the shortest possible distance from where my ball is right now that gets this sprinkler head out of my line of play. And there's really two directions that we can go to do this. We can go left or we can go right. So if we went left, I would be able to put my ball right there and have complete relief from the sprinkler head. But I'm also gonna check on the right side as well, just to be accurate. Now, if I went to the right side, I would have to put my ball right there to have complete relief from the sprinkler head. Now, you don't have to mark these reference points. You don't even have to mark your nearest point of complete relief, but it is a good idea. And I'm certainly gonna do it here for demonstration purposes. But with these two reference points now marked, uh, we can step back and see which spot is closest to my ball because that will be the nearest spot. And for us, it's gonna be this one right here. So this spot becomes our nearest point of complete relief. From this point, I get a one club length relief area that's no closer to the hole. And my relief area will look like that. I can go ahead and get rid of this tee. I know I'm gonna take relief, so I'm clear to pick up this ball. I don't need to mark the spot of that ball when I pick it up. Now with this ball in hand, I can either clean it and use it or substitute it for another ball. I'm just gonna hang onto this one right here. I'm gonna complete taking relief now by finding a good spot where I wanna drop it. I'm gonna go ahead and on this side and drop it from knee height. The ball landed in and came to rest in the relief area. This ball is now in play and I can make my next stroke. Now let's take this just a half a step further. You'll notice 
that my nearest point of complete relief was on the left side of the sprinkler head, but my one club length got me to the right side. So if I wanted to go to the right side and drop within that relief area, I'm well within my right to do so. And depending on the circumstances of my next stroke, it might make sense to do that. If I have a severe left to right slope here on the green and I wanted to have a better angle for my putt, then that's certainly okay. I can go to the right side. I just wanted to make it clear that even though we had to go left to find our nearest point of complete relief, we can still go back right with our one club length. Also, you'll notice that there's a little gap within this relief area, and that's because it's not part of our relief area. If my ball was anywhere in that gap, I would still have interference by the sprinkler head for my line of play. And when we take relief, we have to take complete relief. So I just wanted to make that clear. That's why that gap exists. It's not part of our relief area. So that's something to be aware of. And that's how you deal with sprinkler heads near the putting green. So I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, do me a huge favor and like this video because the more people that like this video, the more people that will see this video and we'll all get to learn the golf rules. If you have any comments, drop them down in the comment section down below. I'll get right back to you. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one.